So the next rule that we're going to look at is the power rule. Um, so we, we look at x squared in the last example. We saw how to do that straight from the definition. Um, here we're going to let n be any positive integer exponent. Okay? And we were going to show that the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. Uh, so for example, if f of x is equal to x squared, we expect that f prime of x, if we follow this pattern, um, the exponent n comes down in front. So the 2 comes down times x to the 2 minus 1, x to the 1, which is simply 2x, just as we saw before. Okay. Um, if g of x is equal to x cubed, just so we see one more, g prime, 3 comes down in front. We subtract 1 from the exponent. 3 minus 1 leaves us with an exponent of 2, and so on. Right? So we can quickly take the derivative of any power function um, once we know this rule is true. Um, so we're gonna, I've stated this for n being a natural number, right, a positive integer, uh, because that's what we're capable of proving at this point. Um, later on, we are going to see that, in fact, the power rule is valid for any real number exponent. Okay? Um, so n could, in fact, be any real number. But we're not ready to show that yet, so we'll, we'll start with this basic case. Um, now, the way you prove the power rule is, well, it's from the definition, like anything else. If we don't know what to do um, with a derivative, we go back to the definition. And so we'll let f of x equal x to the n. Then f prime, well, it's the limit as h goes to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And in this case, that becomes x plus h to the n minus x to the n over h. OK. Now, here you have a power of a binomial, right? The reason we're doing x n to be a positive integer is that if n is a positive integer, the binomial theorem holds. I threw it up here as a reminder. Um, you don't need to remember all the binomial coefficients for this proof. You just need to remember that this is how it starts because what we're going to get is that this is the limit as h goes to 0 of x to the n plus n x to the n minus 1 times h. And the next one is going to be n choose 2 x to the n minus 2 h squared, and so on. All the other terms involve at least an h cubed, right? All divided by h. OK. As usual, we attempt to simplify. x to the n minus x to the n cancels. We always expect that anything not involving h in the numerator cancels out. And we're left with, if we divide by h, limit as h goes to 0. So here the h's are going to cancel. n, x to the n minus 1. And well, all these other terms, there's at least an h squared, right? There's an h squared term. If there's more, there's going to be h cubed, maybe h to the 4. Um, but when I divide by h, there's at least one h left over. All right, so there's some stuff here that's multiplied by h. But h is going to 0. And when it does, we're just left with the one term that doesn't have an h in it. And we get our power rule.